Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Own the Life of Your Dreams YouTube channel. My name is Tamisha, and I am so glad to have you here with me today. And the reason why is because today is a special day, and it's simply because it's my birthday. Go, 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 Charlotte. It's your birthday. We gon' party like it's your birthday. We gon' sip a party like it's your birthday. And you know we don't give a fuck because that's your birthday. Yes. I am silly. You know this. Actually, it was it's not today. It was yesterday. That's my birthday. We had a fantastic time. Um, I had to go to work. Yeah. And it got better towards the end. I had to get my mind right. Yes, it's your birthday. And yes, you're at work. So you got to get your mind right. <laughs> and so it started off not too great. And then as I went through the day, it got better. And then when I left, I had so much fun with my husband. He took me out to Olive Garden and we ate or I ate a whole lot of, uh, what did I eat? Oh, shrimp <laughs> fettuccine Alfredo, which I love. It's one of my favorite dishes. And so I probably have packed on a few pounds today, which I'm so scared to even step on the scale. But it's okay. It's okay. I still have vision. I'm still going to lose weight. And I'm still on target. Well, I was on target to meet my goal. But even if not, I'm going to be good by the end of this month. I am claiming that. All right. And not only that, I went to um, with my mother, my daughter, my sisters in law, and my niece. We all went out to uh, sports co or comedy sports in Houston and had a ball. We had a great time laughing and joking. And then my son came home from his celebration. And we stayed up until past midnight laughing and joking then as well. And so I'm a little groggy, but, you know, I had a great time. It was my birthday. I'm 38 or 21 for the 17th time. So awesome, awesome stuff. So generally what I do on my birthdays is I reflect on what it was that's happened this year and what I would do or advice that I would have given myself in the past that would have made 38 an even better accomplishment or I mean this is a great accomplishment anytime that you have made it to another year it's a bonus and a blessing because there's so many people out there that don't but I could have been so much further along and in my process, in my journey, had I kept some things in mind. And so if you are younger than 38, then I want to implore you that you can do some of these things to set up yourself so that when you get to 38, it's a much bigger party, okay? You can do a whole lot more things with your life because this is all about setting yourself financially free and being financially free. And if you do little things now, when it comes to your turn to be 38 or 48 or 58, 68, 78, life would be a dream for you. And that is essentially what we're trying to go through. So I'm going to go through the five things that I think I should have done when I was 21 that would have set me up at 38 to not even have to work. So this is the first thing or number five, I should say, is I should have got to know myself a little bit better. When you're sitting there in your parents' house, you know, you basically take in the information that they give you and you make that your reality because, you know, if you have parents like mine, that's, that is your reality. You, you can't buck or shirk the system unless you want to get, you know, slapped. So, <laughs> you know, you just basically go with the flow and you don't really have too much of an opinion because you're not really taught to. You're not taught to do that at home. You're not taught to do that in school. So when I got out of high school and I traveled a thousand miles from home to Florida, I grew up in Maryland and I went to school in Florida. Damn you. Hey. Um, 
I had to learn how to become an adult. And I think that is so important as young people that you do get away from your family because it teaches you how to be an adult. It teaches you number one, number one, can you stand on your own? And it gives you an idea of what is your opinion on things. You know, do you really like to wash your clothes in Tide? Would you rather wash it in Gain or some other product? And you won't know that until you experience it yourself. And if you're st stuck under your parents, you will never learn that information. So though I did get away, there's still things about myself that I didn't know that I was not confident in. I could not stand on my own opinion. I always felt bad if I, you know, kind of differed from the majority. And so I kind of just went with the flow. And I wish at that point in college and when I got out of college and then got married and then had kids really soon afterwards, I never really got a chance to say, okay, is this what I want for my life? And am I happy with the choices that I've made and should I do better or do different ones at this point. And so I think it's so important to get to know who you are and what you stand for. And granted, you're not going to know all of that at age 18, 19, 21, 22. It's taken, it's taken me years to figure that out. But the fact of the matter is if I had concentrated on doing those things at least at some points of the day you know not all day oh my god what am i going to do with my life all day but if i had at least taken some time to figure out who i was and what i was about in the beginning when i was younger it wouldn't have taken me as long to get to what i really want to do now and though i'm glad that I'm there now, it was a very long and strenuous and arduous process that I did not have to go through. So if you're out there listening to me, especially if you're single at this point, do not rush into relationships, get to know yourself, who you are, who you stand for, and know the God that you serve. And once you have all of those things in line, it'll be easier to add the person. All right, number four, I wish I was able to create goals and make plans to make those goals come true. And generally, you know, you make excuses. Well, I don't have money. I don't have support. I don't have all of these, this, that, and the other. But truly, honestly, when you make the decision and you go out and you find the plans to make your decision happen, they'll generally happen. And so most of us get this great idea in our mind and just go, oh, it can't happen. It's not going to be me. And the question is, why can't it be you? Why can't you be the next great inventor? Why can't you do something that revolutionizes I don't, the education system or revolutionizes the corporate world or revolutionizes whatever, um, whatever entity or program or software or whatever it is that you're into, why can't you be the one that comes up with this great idea that puts it out on the market that makes people's lives an awesome, awesome, you know, why can't it be you? And I think we downplay our potential so much that we keep ourselves from giving value to the world, which keeps us handicapped and honestly broke. Because I believe the more value you offer the world, the more money is going to come to you because your service is what gets you rewarded. And so if you're offering more service, the more rewards come to you. And it doesn't have to be in monetary form, but I think the end result would be monetary form. So the more that you use your potential, the more ideas flow, the more ideas flow, the more um, opportunities and resources come to you and eventually in the end the more money that you have but many of us cut off our source and supply of ideas and opportunities because we shut down the very idea that can take us out from this point a 
to a more prosperous point B. And so don't sell yourself short. If you have an idea, run with that idea. Create a goal for it and make plans, definite plans, to make it happen. Be persistent and go after it with all of your heart. And I wish I had known that at 21 because I believe I would have been so much further now. All right, that's number four. If you're liking the video, please subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified anytime I drop a new video. Thanks. Number three, I would say is enjoy the process, okay? Um, because there are going to be bumps in the road. There are going to be obstacles. And I believe what at some points in my life, especially I think about 24, 25, when I was popping out babies like real quickly, um, I had gotten into a state of depression because I felt like my life was out of control. And it was, it was out of my control. You know, God knew what he was doing, but I couldn't control everything that was happening to me. And it felt like all my circumstances and situations were against me. I couldn't find a suitable job that was making a good amount of money. I had a job, which I praise the Lord for, but I could not find something that was going to you know, offer the benefits and the security that now I kind of scoff at. But back then, you know, I had two babies. I needed the security. I want, and my husband could, didn't think anything past that. You know, it had to be something that was secure. And I didn't have enough confidence in myself to do the whole freedom thing. And so because I didn't, I fell into that mindset, well, I have to have, you know, a salary position that gives me health benefits and all of this stuff. And I sweat and stressed through basically 10 to 11 years of my life instead of enjoying where I was. I did not enjoy the fact that I had two amazingly smart, beautiful children, that I had a husband that was willing to work himself crazy to help provide. I didn't enjoy the fact that, you know, even though we weren't in a, a place financially that we wanted to be, we had house, we had a house and we were owning that house. We owned that house. You know, we weren't renting anything. We had cars. Um, we could have, we had transportation. We could get around. We couldn't always pay for gas, but <laughs> we were in a much better spot than other people in our same age group at that time in Mississippi. And so I did, I wasn't grateful enough for the things that I had. I was so stuck on what I couldn't get in the situations that I was in and the circumstances that were negative to me that I allowed that stuff to overcome my, to overcome my, my thoughts. And I'd never, but I not never, and I did not push through them quick enough in order for it to be, in order for me to be the person that I wanted to be, or I needed to be, or that I had the potential to be quicker. And so you're not always going to be in the situation that you want to be in. And even in reaching out and going for your goals and doing everything that you want to do in life, it takes persistence. It's going to take persistence, number one, because it's going to take more time than you think it should take. And it's going to take more money, probably, than what you think it's going to take. And it's going to take more stick to it. And there's going to be things in your way, people, situations, circumstances, obstacles that you think that should not be there, but it's all in pressing you into being the diamond that you're supposed to be. We all come into this world as coal, but it only but it takes pressure to create the diamond. And so many of us shirk the pressure stage and shirk the the stage where we have to give and pay our dues and do what it is that we need to do in order to get our goals because we think it should be easier. We think it should come quicker. We are not willing to sow enough to reap the harvest that we want to get. 
And so for so many of us, we never get where we want to be. We never reach the potentials that we should get because we're not willing to enjoy the process. We're not willing to go through what we need to go through in order to get the reward at the end. And that brings me to my number two. <laughs> I think I'm on number two. Yeah. It brings me to my number two goal and my or number two wish that I had done sooner, and that is to learn to let go and to let God, because there are certain things that you're just not going to be able to control. And at that time, instead of taking all of that on and stressing on the fact that, oh my God, I don't have enough money to buy diapers this week for my two little ones, just like, okay, God, you know, I need diapers for my two little ones. I can't get it for myself. You're going to have to step in the gap and make it happen. And I believe that my faith was grounded at this stage because I had to believe for things that I could not do myself. And I had to learn to let go and let God. And though I had to let God. That does not mean that I let go. And most of us will be like, oh my God, you know, I can't do all of this thing, stressing and worrying, but that's not going to bring anything into your life. The only way that you can please God is through faith. And without it, you can't please him. And so it is our unbelief that keeps us, that stops that energy a force of ideas and blessings that are coming your way. So I had to learn that, okay, I, I don't know, whatever, you're going to have to do it. And even when the husband came at me, he was like, well, how are we going to make this happen? I don't know. You're going to have to ask him. And he didn't like that answer. And so we've had many, many intense times of fellowship because of it. But the fact of the matter is, I had to learn to let go because I would have been in the nut house if I didn't. And so if you are in this time of testing trials, you know, you are in a valley state where you feel like everything is coming against you and there's nothing you can do to help pull yourself out of this situation. You let go, you look at your goals and you believe that it's going to happen despite the circumstances, despite um, the situations that you may be in, despite what the bank account says, all of that stuff is temporary. It is. I know when you're in it, it looks like it's going to be a forever thing, but believe me, it is a temporary state of, be of being and it will not last forever. So just believe that, stand on that, have faith in that and see your goal and press through till you see your breakthrough. All right. And the last thing I wish I would have done when I had some money, I wish I would have saved and I wish I would have invested because there are many things that I had. You know, there are many times where I did have money and I was making a hot lot of money. Matter of fact, there was like almost a year where I was balling in Mississippi. <laughs> I have money galore. Now, I can't tell you where any of that money went. Well, partially, I, that was my first cruise. I took some of that money and took my husband on my first cruise because we didn't have a honeymoon, like, like a, an official honeymoon. And so I decided to use that money to take him out, and we had a blast. But, you know, aside from that, I don't know where that money went. I mean, I couldn't even tell you. And so I wish I would have budgeted my money carefully. I wish I would have taken some money and set it aside. And once I had built a, a nice enough emergency fund, maybe two, $3,000, I took that money and invested it in something because I had the background for it. You know, my, my parents were doing that stuff and, you know, they made it a part of our lives, especially my mother. She had us invested in, in mutual funds when we were younger. And so that was a part of me. It just never clicked that that should be something that I was doing. And my God, how, where I would be if I had done that at the age of 21. Now, I probably wouldn't have had to work. I probably wouldn't have to be going and dealing in, with teaching and stressing about all of that. But I assure you, that is a temporary state too. 
All right. So I hope this was of value to you. If it was, make sure that you give me the thumbs up. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm giving you fresh daily videos just like this because I want you to be successful in life. I want you to experience financial freedom forever. And if that's something that burns within you, a passion that you have, then you must join me on this journey because I'm going to be giving you tips, tricks, and everything that you need to help you be successful in that arena because I believe that you can do it. There's no reason why us as African Americans can't be in a better a better state, a better spot than what we are right now. And it's only because of our mindset and our thinking and how we think of money. And if we can change that, then we can be a powerhouse to be reckoned with. There's so many different cultures in America, and yet we spend so much money. We basically help run everybody else's culture. We fund everybody else's culture but our own. It's time out for that. And so if you're interested in learning how to do that, make sure you subscribe uh, to the um, channel, and I would love to help you on your journey to being a more prosperous and financially free individual family and community all right so until next time my friend make sure you think big dream big take action so that you may own the life of your dreams bye now